My name is Yuan Mortara, and in this video I will present our work with my PhD advisor Philippe Collet on capturing the diversity of analysis on the Linux kernel variability. We know the Linux kernel not only because it is a widely used operating system, but also because of its impressive statistics, which made it an important use case for research work in various domains, such as security, code quality, analysis of its development process, both on the code management and also organizational point of views, but also notably in the software product line community for the study of its build system, which manages more than 15,000 features, which are used in more than 60,000 files, totalizing over 28 million lines of code. This build system is made of three steps. First, the configuration step called kconfig consists in files defining the features and constraints between them. This step can also be assimilated if you want as a feature model definition. When the user selects the desired features, the constraints are solved and these features are then used in the two other steps which participate in the derivation of the kernel variant. The first one is called the kbuild, which consists in make files selecting source files, and the second one, the C preprocessor, which selects code blocks in these files. Then the resulting code will be compiled to form a kernel variant. In each one of these three steps, conditions on features are defined to select the different assets, for example, source files in the kbuild or code blocks in the CPP. And these conditions need to be satisfied for the asset to be selected. In some cases, since the same features are used in the constraints in all spaces, some anomalies can happen. An anomaly characterizes defects occurring in the build system. For example, the fact that some parts of the code are never selectable, or on the opposite, always selected due to conflicting constraints, or also that they rely on features that are not defined. Studies on these anomalies describe them by providing an informal definition, along with a satisfiability formula allowing formally to check if the anomaly is present in the build system. As an example, the definition on the right is extracted from the state of the art and is part of our study. It presents two defects, called dead and undead, expressing that some part of the code is never or always selected, and provides a formal representation of this property in the form of a Boolean representation. These different anomalies are divided into two categories. Internal anomalies are due to conflicts inside the space, whereas external anomalies are due to conflicts between two or the three spaces. As these anomalies can lead to the creation of broken kernel variants and cause problems during the derivation of a variant, it has been tackled by the scientific community. And multiple papers actually analyzed and formalized uh, all these anomalies. However, these formalisms are partial and each one of them only covers some of the anomalies. Thus, no formalism actually tackles all the different types of anomalies. And this leads to some incoherences. Every paper introduces its own terminology to describe the build system, and since these papers often extend previous work, we encounter also overlapping of formulas with different conventions. These incoherences and this absence of unified model prevents a fine-grained understanding of the Linux build system, preventing the reuse of these elements on other similar build systems. Our goal with this contribution is to remove this limitation by proposing a unified model allowing to have a global view at fine grain of the existing anomalies in the Linux build system at the three levels using a single terminology. This model defines necessary and sufficient properties to be able to cover and extend work on anomalies from the state of the art with, for objective, to allow a better comprehension of the existing work on these anomalies for both academics and kernel practitioners, and also improve its applicability to other build systems. I will now present you in more details uh, the incoherencies that are present in the state of the art. So in 2010, Sincero et al. characterized the formula to check if a code block is dead by checking the non-satisfiability of the conjunction between the Boolean formula for the selection of the block and the constraints for all other blocks in the code space, which are represented in this formula by C. However, in practice, taking into account the whole set of constraints does not scale due to the numbers of features and code blocks present in the kernel. 
So the formula that is presented here cannot be reused like this. So we need to have a finer grain view of the context that is present around the selected asset that is here hidden. This work has then been extended and definitions have been updated to consider also constraints from the kconfig and make spaces. But the problem here is the same and the integrity of the spaces are considered in the given formulas. So these formalisms given to identify the anomalies are not fine grade enough to allow reusability. Another problem preventing this is the fact that some definitions that are given are inconsistent. A first definition qualifies as an undead block, a block that is always included under the precondition that its parent is included. So if we take the following example on the right, block 2 has the same if condition than its parent, which is block 1, and this makes it undead. However, a second definition states that a block is undead if it is always present. But by not selecting the feature A in our example, block 2 is not selected. It is therefore not always present and thus is not qualified as undead, according to this second definition. Finally, uh, differences also appear in denominations that are given to different spaces in the different papers describing the Linux build system and also in the naming conventions used in formulas for identifying the different anomalies. These incoherences hamper the comprehension of both the build system and also the studied anomalies, which calls uh, for a need for realignment. So the three steps of the build system actually define constraints in the form of Boolean formulas to select assets, being features for kconfig, source files for kbuild, and code blocks for CPP. And concerning CPP, these constraints have already been formally defined by Sincero et al. as presence conditions. So in this model, we generalize this notion of presence condition for all constraints in the free spaces to be able to reason on all of them. We then define two concepts uh, using these presence conditions. First, a configurator, which represents a step creating a configuration by solving constraints on features, which in the Linux build system represents kconfig. And a derivator on assets, representing a step using a configuration to derive the variant by selecting the different assets. This derivator represents kbuild, which selects source files, and cpp, which selects code blocks. As we said earlier, multiple spaces can be considered to determine if an asset is selectable or not. The internal presence condition considers only its own space, whereas the external presence condition also considers what we call the context being other spaces than its own. So the Linux build system is made of a configurator and two derivators. The configurator's presence condition and the derivator's internal presence conditions consider constraints inside their own space. The external presence conditions consider also at least another space as the context of the asset. For example, the selection of the source files and code blocks relies on constraints on features. So to consider these constraints, the context of the make space is the kconfig space. The selection of code blocks not only relies on constraints and features, but also on the selection of its source files. To consider both spaces of constraints, the context is then made of both spaces. It is also possible to consider only one space of constraints and look only for constraints related to the make space or to the kconfig space. Therefore, the internal presence condition is used to check for the presence of internal anomalies related to an asset and the external presence condition for external anomalies. The model that I just showed you has been formally defined along with a set of properties to express the anomalies and you will find their definition in the published paper. We also instantiated 25 definitions of anomalies that have been extracted from the main existing work on studying and formalizing inconsistencies in the Linux build system. All the instantiations did not fit in the paper and they can be found in the companion technical report that is available on Zenodo. So obviously I am not going in this presentation to detail all these elements 
And instead, I will now detail step by step the mechanism to build internal and external presence conditions and how they are used to identify dead anomalies. So we will build three presence conditions on the CPP block B3. In the first one, we will consider the constraints from the code space by determining the internal presence condition of B3. Then we will add the constraints from the make space by determining the external presence condition of B3 using as context the make space. And finally, we will add the kconfig constraints by determining the external presence condition of B3 using as context both make and kconfig spaces. So first, to determine whether B3 is selectable, we need to check if its condition for selection is satisfiable. So here, if the fcell feature is selected, then its parent block, being B1, also needs to be selectable, which we check by determining the internal presence condition of B1. Finally, B3 being an else if block, the preceding if block must not be selectable, which is checked by determining the negation of B2's presence condition. Finally, by conjuncting all the obtained expressions, we obtain the formula for the internal presence condition of B3. Now, we will add to this expression the constraints from the make space. In the make space, the selectability of B3 relies on the selectability of its file the file that contains B3, being foo.c. And foo.c is selectable if its selection condition is satisfiable. So here, if the foo feature uh, is selected. And if its parent directory is selectable, checked by obtaining the presence condition of the dir directory. By doing this, we obtain the internal presence condition of foo.c, which conjuncted to in the internal presence condition of B3, gives us the external presence condition of B3 using, as a context, the make space. Finally, we will now add to this expression the constraints from the key config space. Uh, the presence conditions for B3 and foo.c rely on features from the key config space. So we need to check that these features are actually selectable, which is done by checking the presence condition for each feature and by conjuncting these different presence conditions, we obtain the external presence condition of B3, using as context both make and kconfig spaces. We will now illustrate how internal and external presence conditions allow to check for internally and externally dead anomalies. So by to check if B3 is an internally dead block, we check the satisfiability of the internal presence condition of B3 and to check that B3 is an externally dead block, uh, we check the satisfiability of the external presence condition of B3. By comparing the formulas we obtained with formulas given for the same defects in the state of the art, our representation indeed gives more fine-grained expressions, exhibiting only the assets that are considered in every space. We applied this mechanism for 25 anomalies and we obtained the following results. First, all the anomalies from the state of the art could be expressed in our model. And this allowed us to observe two facts. First, that some anomalies have identical names but check different defects. These anomalies include the two undead anomalies detailed earlier in the presentation. On the opposite, some anomalies have different names but check identical defects. And in this case, Two definitions characterize data sets, however, they are not defined as such by the authors. Now that we obtain the model that is ready for use, we plan the future work to develop a model-driven framework to then be able to apply it on to the build systems of other systems, such as BusyBox, Jabster, or Mozilla Firefox. So to conclude, the existing work on the anomalies in the Linux build system offers partial formalisms and some definitions are not aligned between them, which prevents their reuse on other build systems. In this contribution, we built a map of this work and provided a unified model to describe the anomalies in the build system. 
we instantiated all the definitions from the state of the art and characterized existing incoherences between them.